Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today on the show, we're gonna use a new format. We're gonna use this light board. And uh, let me know below how you feel about this, if you like this better, or if you like this uh, not as much as uh, my normal format. In this video, we're gonna talk about spectroscopy in the hydrogen atom. And here, basically, spectroscopy is just the interaction of light and matter. And the hydrogen atom is a good place to start because it's one of our simplest systems. It's just a proton and an electron. And we can push that electron away from the nucleus by putting in light energy. Or when that electron drops down towards the nucleus, that's going to put off energy in the form of light. So basically, we can have an absorption process where, say, our electron starts out at n equals 1. And it goes up to, say, n equals 4. That took up a photon, and so we call that absorption. On the other hand, you can have emission. That is where, uh, say, an electron in the n equals 5 state relaxes to normally the ground state, that is the n equals 1 state, and that's actually going to put off a photon. So we'll call that an emission process. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show how you can calculate the wavelengths of light that will be emitted or absorbed when your hydrogen atom undergoes different transitions. And so here we have our equation that's going to tell us the energy levels of our orbitals um, for our hydrogen atom. And all we have to do if we want to calculate them is if we want to know the energy of the first level, then we plug in n equals 1 for that guy. If we want to know the energy of the second level, we plug in n equals 2. And so in this way, you can use this equation to get the energy of all of the different levels in your hydrogen atom. This guy comes out of the Schrodinger equation. It's the energy eigenvalues for your hydrogen atom. Just like you could calculate the energy eigenvalues for the particle in the box or the harmonic oscillator. And this allows us to calculate the light we would expect to absorb or emit under different circumstances. Now, these guys, all the rest of the stuff in this equation are all constants. That is, they don't change. It's the mass of the electron, the charge of the electron, uh, Planck's constant. And so what we can do is we can write out this equation in a form that's a little nicer for using. We'll just put 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th joules, and that turns out to be negative, over n squared. That negative sign, by the way, is just by convention. Basically, we set zero as the energy where your electron is free from your hydrogen atom. And that means that any electrons that drop below that energy are technically negative. So it's just by convention. Just like if you are below sea level, you're at a negative elevation. The, the convention here doesn't mean anything in absolute terms. It just tells you where you are relative to a certain energy, which is, in this case, where you are relative to a free electron. So what we've done here is we've just collected all those constants into one constant in terms of joules, and that simplifies our calculations. Okay, let's go ahead and use these equations to solve a problem. Okay, so this question asks, what wavelength of light is emitted when an electron relaxes from the n equals 5 state to the ground state? So in this case, what we're thinking about is our electron starting out in the n equals 5 state and then dropping all the way down to the ground state, or the n equals 1 state. And that's going to be an emission process, and that's why it uses the word emission. How are we going to calculate that? Well, basically, there's two steps. Step one is just we're going to calculate delta E. And delta E is just equal to the energy final of our hydrogen atom minus the energy initial. So remember from what we talked about a moment ago that we can write our energy in terms of this uh, joule term, negative 2.178, I'm sorry, 179, times 10 to the minus 18 joules over n squared. So that's the energy of any given level. So if we want to do a change in energy, this guy, then what we can do is we can just pull this term out in front of both energy final and initial, and we can write our equation for our change in energy like this. We can pull out the negative 2.179 times 10 to the minus 18 joules, and we can just multiply that by 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared. So all we've done basically is pulled this term out in front of both of our n's. Now, what do I plug in for n final and n initial? Well, I'm starting out at the 5 state. So that means my initial state, n i, is 5. And my final state is 1, the ground state. So I plug in 1 there. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Let's plug in one for n final. And let's plug in five for n initial. Now, when I go ahead and calculate that out, what I'm gonna get is that my change in energy is negative, um, is negative something, negative 2.09 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Notice there's that negative sign there. And that's because your hydrogen atom has had an electron relax. So your hydrogen atom is actually at a lower energy. Your hydrogen atom has lost energy and it's given it up to that photon. And that means that actually the change in energy for an emission process is equal to negative the energy of your photon. What you can always remember if you want is that the magnitude of the change in energy will always be equal to the energy of your photon. So you don't have to remember a sign if you just remember that equation. But for emission processes, your change in energy goes in the negative of what your energy of photon is. And for absorption processes, they'll be the same. So now let's do step two. So that was step one. Step two is gonna be calculate lambda. And that process is pretty straightforward. So to calculate lambda, we're just gonna use our equation EF is equal to HC over lambda. Now, we want this guy, so we gotta do some algebra. We're gonna multiply both sides by lambda and then divide both sides by energy of our photon. And that's gonna give us the equation that says lambda is equal to HC over the energy of our photon. Then I'm gonna plug in 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th, that's Planck's constant. And I'm gonna plug in 2.998 times 10 to the eighth for the speed of light. And I'm gonna divide that all by the energy of the photon I got before, 2.09 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. When I do that, I'm gonna get my lambda out and it's gonna be 950 nanometers. So that tells me that if I have a photon or an electron relax from the N equals five state to the ground state, it's gonna put off a, a photon at about 950 nanometers. That's barely in the infrared. All right, let's take a look at one more process. This is gonna be an absorption process. So this question asks, what wavelength of light is needed to ionize an electron from the n equals one state? So here we wanna take an electron from our n equals one state, that's the ground state, and kick it all the way up so it never stops going away. It just keeps traveling away. That's an absorption process. It's gonna take up a photon. And it's a little tricky here maybe to figure out what your final state is. Well, if you are taking an electron all the way away from the atom, then we can consider our n final to be infinity. And that's useful. We'll get to that in a second. Our n initial, it's starting out at n equals one. So how are we gonna solve this problem? The steps are actually exactly the same. Step one is calculate delta E. So let's do that. Delta E, we can use our same equation from before is equal to negative 2.179 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Let's give ourselves more space here. Times one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared. It's one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared. Now, what do we plug in for those? Well, remember, our final state is infinity. So eventually we're gonna be infinitely far away from the atom. That's what it means to be ionized. It's like escape velocity when you're on a rocket. You're gonna travel all the way away from the Earth. And our n initial, well, that was one. This goes to zero. So as this term gets bigger and bigger, this fraction here gets smaller and smaller, and eventually it's zero. So really all we have is this guy times a negative one. So our signs cancel, and what we're gonna get for our change in energy is just this term we had out front, 2.179 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. All right, step two. Calculate lambda, same way as we did before. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use our equation rearranged, which says that lambda is equal to hc over the energy of our photon. In this case, notice the change in energy is positive because it's an absorption process. We're giving energy to our electron. And when we plug in our Planck's constant, 6.626, not two decimals, just one, times 10 to the minus 34, times rc, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth 
all divided by the energy of our photon, 2.179 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. When we do all that, our lambda that we get out will be 91 nanometers. So it turns out that if you want to ionize a hydrogen atom, that you need to hit it with 91 nanometer light. That turns out to be UV. So this has been a basic introduction to uh, spectroscopy and the hydrogen atom. We've gone over an absorption process and an emission process. But with the equation that I've introduced you to, you can calculate the wavelength of light needed to absorb or emit an elect uh, a photon by moving the electron from any state that you want. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking the icon right here. Thanks for watching.